the covers off. Hello everybody, it's Chris, and today we are going to be flashing the Vampire with a new core. Um, because there's a new core out for the Vampire, it's 2.1. My PC just crashed. <laughs> 2.1.2, I think. And, uh, yep, yeah, it crashed. So, to do that, I need to install the USB blaster. It's a special program for Altera FPGAs. It just goes into the JTAG port with a JTAG cable. The same kind of cable that I use for the Ethernet module in the other video. And it has a whopping two lights, a power, and an activity. Um, uh, I have a disk check on wind blows. Disk check windows. It's an SSD. Okay, so anyway. So here you can see where we installed the Ethernet module. Well, that's the Ethernet port. This is a version 2.2 board, it looks like. Uh, Rev 2.2 right on the top here. And I'm going to plug the JTAG module into the JTAG port. And I always support this side and kind of lift up a little bit because when you push down here, it causes the 68,000 socket to tilt. And if you're real careful here, you can go right up the side of the 5.25 bay. I'm just going to leave this sucker inside. I always take it out or I run it over here. But it's a pain in the butt, and it's just easier to pop the cover off and not have to take this thing apart again. Every time I go to do a video, look. I did get a new microphone. Some big blue snowball thing from Blue. That's not what I'm on right now. Attempting repairs. Watch this fail. Everything's on it. And I finally got my uh, OBS configured to work correctly. Now it blows up. Just booting the vampire, I have it all back together, the USB blaster is right here. But unfortunately, my PC took a poo. Oh, the core I'm going to be going on is a X11 clock, I think this one's 12, I don't know. So right now, the vampire is running at uh, 6840, 6840, 318 uh, megahertz. This reboots so fast, I think my PC might actually even be up now. I see it doing something. Real quick, let's just check it. Ah, I have a swirly, so I'm getting, I'm getting there. But anyway, there's two ways of flashing a vampire. You can use the Altera USB blaster, which I am going to be using. This is a Rev-C. Uh, you have to download some software from Intel for their FPGA uh, programming suite. And once you install that, you basically point to the core. Everything is done through JTAG. If uh, that turd would ever boot, we could do it. So we installed the Quartus programmer and I had to browse for the driver in the Alteris directory once it installed. So we're going to go into Quartus 13.1 programmer. We're going to do file. We're going to do open. We're going to choose the V500X12 core. Alrighty. Hardware setup. And then... Uh, Device, okay, I'm gonna check off program and I'm gonna say start one JTAG and it is programming. Erasing. Now the Amiga is still running. Programming device. Now this will have the new core on it, which has a new logo. And if I did this correctly, all we'll have to do is turn the device off. And if I screw this up, I can always flash it back. Up here in the top right of the screen, you can see the progress. Now this does still have the 3.1 ROM in it, I believe. They have not done 3.1.4 because of legality issues, you can't. Um, I can put my own ROM on there, but they highly suggest you have the 1200 ROM, which I only have the 2005 and 6 and the 3000 twin ROM. So we're at 95, it's verifying. Okay, it has ended, it is successful. Nope, don't wanna save my changes. We're gonna turn off, unplug the JTAG, turn it on, it's on input one. So if we get it to the new logo, you see the Vampire Core 212. And there we are, coughing R54 on Core 212. This is a beta, this is a X, 12 it's a little turned down turn this sucker up i'm gonna mount the micro sd now nothing changes on coffin i'm gonna crank this up to speed three 
Oh, the mouse is different. I can't click. The mouse is way better responsive, but I cannot. It's off. It's a little bit larger of a footprint of uh, the mouse. That's kind of weird. Okay, so let's uh, let's see something here. Where's the point? The hardware pointer is just a little off. So pointer response is like spot on. Let's see what the speed is. We're gonna do sys speed system info. It still says 60, 347 megahertz. So I've increased in speed. That's cool. Copy this here. Forgot that was on my iCloud drive. I wanna copy this here. This key, oops, shit. this one's 84 megs. It's two RC12 because it's got the RTC. Look at the difference in the gold three alpha. What well, new vampire graphics got a copy to Livus Picasso 96 gold 212 RC3 15 16 bit RTG mode hardware improvements, sprite area size, XY position coordinate. That's what it is. Vampire support 40.37. FSP 080, uh, October 26, 2019, V2 of Apollo specific CPU support library and ROM named 68040 to be picked up by 3.1 and later set patch. New minimal boot pick with the new melody. I like the old one. Slow CPU and chip mem range, also turtle. That's fine. Expands the chip with WHD load. Okay, that's for your UX, you just gotta select EXP chip with WHD load for auto turtle. Uh, improved turtle mode, faster 32-bit write for the IDE, improved rebooting when using a map ROM, and updated the, I don't care about this, this is the, if you have a joystick and you press the button when you boot a vampire, it turns it into a freaking Atari, I found that out by accident, so this works well, um, I have to copy this to Libs Picasso 96, so what I need to do is go to the Amiga side here, so we're going to flip to HDMI. So I need to copy this. It goes to the Libs Picasso 96 folder. Okay, so, so now we're going to run directory Opus, which is this. All right. Just in case. And move this one in. Okay, not too much bigger. Uh, all right, and now we have to do something with the monitor icon tool type. We're going to go into system. And I'm just following along what's in the, the readme in the uh, Gold 212 release candidate 3. So now we're going to go to devs monitors and then this one I'm gonna go right Amiga I and you see the vampire graphics and shoot all right we are going to add video mem size equals zero M so let's see video mem size I could change this to zero M and I think I have to always hit enter because and then save okay and I think that is it let's give this thing a restart there's the vampire core 212 x x 12 doesn't do the resizing all right so we're gonna go into I'm gonna just run sys speed again and we're just gonna run the system info and we're at 347 megahertz. Let's see if Shapeshifter loads any faster. This is going to be weird because it, like, runs in a weird mode. I'm hoping this capture card will grab it. Screw that up. All right, let's see what happens. It's loading. It had a save state. At least the capture card kind of grabbed it. I think. Yep, it's loading Mac OS. And it's got Apple Talk and all that stuff that works. 
Yes, I know. It's, I know it's still on when I was doing Leisure Suit Larry. It kind of remembers where I left off. At least this pointer works. Yeah, this mouse pointer is correct. In the uh, on the Amiga side, it just it's just off a little bit. All right, don't save. Close window. Close window. And we're gonna do special, and we're gonna do a shutdown on that side. Anywho, that is how you update a vampire core, and uh, it's pretty simple, pretty fast. Took about a minute. I'm gonna leave the Altera USB blaster just plugged in. I don't know if I'm keeping this 212 Beta 3. I will be updating this with some more uh, Apollo utilities, which I thought I downloaded. Apparently didn't. Or didn't copy them somewhere. So stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching as always. And I hope you learned something.